So now in this video, we're going to look at using an op amp as a current source. We're going to use the LM358. It's a single supply op amp, which we're going to use here. We're going to have uh, 10 volts. So that's the negative side of the power supply. It's still ground since it's a single supply. And then we got a 10 volt difference. So we're going to put that 10 volts across two equal value resistors and tap in the middle of them. It's a voltage divider. We'll get half of the voltage since there's equal resistance to both sides of the power supply. Remember ground is zero volts. No current goes in or out of the uh, inputs. They just look at the voltages. So we got that voltage. What the output does, it raises the voltage until the inverting input has the same voltage as the non-inverting input. And so with negative feedback right there, we will eventually reach that point as long as we don't have too much in the way. So we got an LED and so to get five volts here, the LED is gonna drop about two or three volts. So the output will get up to about seven or eight volts, somewhere around there, depends on color. So in any case, we'll get uh, five volts at the inverting input. So that goes across the current setting resistor here because that voltage is pushing current and uh, ultimately it really kind of has to have somewhere to go. And uh, so it's headed to ground and one kilo ohm resistor, you take that five volts divided by 1000 ohms, you get 0 0.005 amps or five milliamps right there. Now we could get rid of the LED, just connect the output directly to the inverting input. We'll just have five volts coming out of there and still five volts across the resistor it'll be the same amount of current, even as the load changes, as long as there's enough supply voltage and the output can handle it. So here we are on the board, and really quickly I'm gonna point out, on the schematic, we had the non-inverting above the inverting, but the physical component, the inverting input, is above the non-inverting input. So you gotta pay close attention to schematics with that, because they will uh, change whether the inverting or non-inverting is uh, above or below the other one, but the physical component, they have a certain layout. And uh, so we got the output on the uh, top left there, the inverting input right below it, and then the non-inverting input right below it. We have to power the integrated circuit uh, right there. So we got the uh, positive supply to pin eight and the uh, negative side supply to pin four, just in case you can't see that there. It's going to the negative rail. So there's our equal value resistors. That one going to the positive supply, that one to the negative. They're both 10 kilo ohm resistors. And we have the inverting input, the one kilo ohm resistor going to the negative rail, and then we got the LED here. So the uh, long lead, the anode is to the output, short lead the cathode is up one spot. So now I already turned the meter on to measure current in milliamps. It's a milliamp setting there. For this meter, you don't have to move the uh, red probe for anything but high current. So we can leave the red probe there, and we should be a good distance here. So the uh, anode, the, or the cathode I mean, the short lead of the LED is here. Usually I put anode above, but to here we got the uh, output. And so we went up one spot because below it we have the inverting input. But I'm gonna put that to the LED. Hopefully I got a good connection there. And uh, there we go. Once I get across uh, from the cathode to the inverting input where the current setting resistor is, you can see we got five milliamps of current. So now we're gonna bypass the LED there's no current going through the LED, it's just coming right from the output, and it's still uh, 5 milliamps. Even though the load changed significantly, it held the same amount of current. So that's really about it. It changed slightly, but uh, pretty much it was uh, pretty close to exactly the same. So make sure you turn off the uh, meter. Definitely get it off of measuring current. If you accidentally try to measure a power supply that doesn't limit current, You'll put too much current through the meter and uh, will probably blow a fuse, maybe damage the meter. Make sure you turn it off. So in any case, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting on the screen. Click like, subscribe, the bell, all that. Donate to Patreon if you can. I have links down in the description that helps out the most. But uh, watching videos helps a lot. Thanks for watching them. I'll see you in the next video.